What if I told you that this color doesn't actually exist? It's just a figment of your imagination. Well, it's not quite that simple, but there is truth to the statement. In order to understand why that's the case, let's start with the basics. What is light? Light is electromagnetic radiation that can be perceived by our eye. In short, it's waves which propagate through space containing electromagnetic radiant energy. We can only see a small section of the entire electromagnetic field, which we call the human visible spectrum. And this is what it looks like. You'll notice that the colors are similar to those in a rainbow. On the left, we have our reds and oranges, with the visible light starting at around 400 terahertz, which means this wave oscillates 400 trillion times a second. On the other side of the spectrum, we'll find our purples and violets. Our visible spectrum ends around 750 terahertz. If you want a little hack to remember which side is higher, which side is lower, just consider that the infrared spectrum is situated here. Infrared quite literally meaning lower than red, and ultraviolet over here meaning higher than violet. In between is our entire visible spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Except magenta. Why is that? In order to understand that, we need to understand a little bit of color theory. Let me take you back to elementary school art class to freshen up your memory a little bit. Remember primary colors? These are the three base colors from which all other colors derive, which are red, blue, and yellow. If you mix red and blue, you get purple. If you mix blue and yellow, you get green. And if you mix red and yellow, you get orange. You can then combine all these different color combinations alongside white or black to get the different hues and shades that we can see. And if you mix all the colors together, you'll get brown, gray, or black, depending on your particular recipe and shade of colors. But this is actually an incomplete picture of color theory. And in order to understand the whole picture, we're gonna have to transition from our elementary school art class and into our middle school physics class. You might remember that the dispersion of light through a prism will separate white light into its component colors, which consequently means that white is the combination of all colors. So basically, if you add all the colors together, you get white. And if you remove all the colors, then you get black or the absence of light. But hold on. Back in the art classroom, didn't I just say that mixing all colors together would result in like a brownish black? And now I'm saying that white light is a combination of all colors? How can we be getting both white and black as a result of mixing all colors? That doesn't make any sense. Well, this is due to the difference between subtractive and additive color. I know, I know, it seems like we're going further down a rabbit hole that is increasingly not related to the color magenta, but I promise this will all make sense in the end, just bear with me. The difference between additive and subtractive color is essentially whether the medium we are discussing is a physical medium, like paint or ink, or whether it is light. Take this green book, for example. When I look at this green book, I can see that it's green. But it's not emitting a green beam of light against the wall. It is taking the white light that I already have in this room, absorbing all of the other colors that are in the light and reflecting one color back, green. In other words, it's subtracting red and blue and reflecting green. Let's compare that to this RGB light that I have over here. Now, this light is shining a green light. It's very literally emitting photons of a specific wavelength between 520 nanometers and 560 nanometers. In other words, it's adding green to whatever surface I point it towards. Now, additive color and subtractive color actually react very differently. If I were to add a secondary color to this green, let's say red, the result we would get is yellow if it's additive color and brown if it's subtractive color. What all of this means is that we need two different color standards, and each standard has its own acronym. Subtractive color is prominent in fields such as art and printing, where pigment is used to produce color using reflective light. Nowadays, this is more commonly known as CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. Key meaning black or how much black in order to create the different shades of color. Additive color, on the other hand, has a different, well-known acronym, RGB, which stands for red, green, blue which means that the equal combination of RGB would result in white and the lack of all of them, meaning no light at all, would result in black. And that's exactly how our TVs and computer monitors operate. Each pixel is made up of three sub-pixels, red, green, and blue. Whenever we watch a video, the different pixels are lighting up at different amounts across the screen, which is what allows us to see the entire color spectrum. Now here's the crazy thing. Our eyes work in a very similar way. The way we see things is because of a nerve lining at the back of our eyes called our retinas. These nerve linings are filled with neurons called photoreceptors. We have two different types of photoreceptors. Rod cells, which are low light photoreceptors. We have around 92 million of these. And cone cells, which are the photoreceptors in charge of our color vision. We have around 6 million of these. Of the 6 million cone cells, we have three different types, which are usually referred to as L, M, and S for long, medium, and short wavelengths. Now, if we remember what our visible spectrum looks like, red is at the left end of the spectrum, which are the long wavelengths green is in the middle, and blue is at the higher end of the spectrum, which are the short wavelengths. 
So another way to interpret long, medium, and short is red, green, and blue, or RGB. We have specific cone cells in our eyes that are stimulated when light comes in and hits our retinas. So for example, if we are looking at the color yellow, our red cone cells and our green cone cells will be activated, which tells our brain that we are looking at a color that's in between those two in the visible spectrum. If we look at cyan, our green and blue cone cells will activate, and so on and so forth. But what happens when we mix red and blue? Well, technically, the color space between red and blue would be green. But here's the problem. Our green cone cells are not activating. The wavelength that's hitting our retinas can't be green. But it's in between red and blue, so it must be green. But it can't be green, because our green cone cells aren't activating. That's where magenta comes in, and why it's not a real color. The color we see between red and blue, which is not green, is magenta. It's sort of a placeholder that our brain creates to let us know that it's not actually green. Anyways, that's the explanation behind why magenta doesn't exist. Sort of. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.